Take me somewhere to warmer weather To something better than here I now Cause the days get longer The nights grow colder And lonely shoulder When you're not This is Mulligan's, where life gets messy, love gets complicated, and second chances just might save the day. Let's begin. Chapter 2 Stacy Davidson pulled a steaming tray of apple cinnamon muffins out of the oven and set them on a cooling rack on the counter. At 42, she still cut a striking figure in her apricot dress, hair pulled back and makeup understated but flawless, just like the rest of her. She pushed back a stray strand of blonde hair from her face with an oven mitt and then rested her hands on her hips, assessing the situation. Apple cinnamon muffins, his favorite, iced tea, fresh fruit salad, sliced mozzarella, manchego, and gouda. Fresh coffee rested in the French press ready to be squeezed. I think we're ready, she whispered to herself. It was just an afternoon snack, but she guessed her son Tyler and his friend would be hungry when they arrived. After all, it was a good four-hour drive from the university town out to the lake. She and the family had only arrived the week before from the city, and she'd been on her feet since, spring cleaning, grocery shopping, and preparing the lake house for another summer. Stacy grabbed the fruit salad and sliced cheese from the counter and made her way to the kitchen table where her 10-year-old daughter Bertie was fully immersed in role play with her Barbie dolls. Both naked, she had Ken kneeling over Barbie with his hands on her chest. First, see if the victim is conscious and breathing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Bertie lowered her voice to play Ken. Second, call for help in a loud, clear voice. Help! Help! Third, if they are not breathing, check the mouth for anything that might be blocking the airway, like an apple core or something. Bertie, why are your Barbie people naked? Don't you think they might be more comfortable practicing CPR in clothes? Stacy asked as she set down the fruit salad and cheese plate. They were swimming and Skipper almost drowned, Bertie answered, her eyes wide with the absolute horror of the situation. Nakedness is nothing to be ashamed of, Bertie, but at the dining room table, maybe they could at least pop on some swimwear. Stacy wheeled around behind Bertie, deftly pulling a hair tie out of her dress pocket and pulling her blonde tresses back into a presentable ponytail. I know, I know, Bertie lamented. Tyler's coming home. The age difference between Bertie and her brother was nearly 11 years. But every once in a while, Stacy would feel a twinge of despair as she noticed her little girl growing up. The next seven years would all too quickly pass, and then where would she be? She'd have the graduation and prom to plan for, of course, and then there'd be the excitement of getting ready for college, but after that? She'd already learned over the past three years with Tyler away at university that the need for her in his life was waning. His first year away at college, they had spoken at least every other night, catching up on his classes, new friends, and she was generally able to calm any fear or worry he may have had. Of course, she was sure that Tyler wouldn't want all his friends to know he spoke with his mother that often. Part of becoming a man was breaking away from one's mother. She understood this. Still, it didn't make it easy for her. This past year, his calls had become increasingly less frequent, she assumed it had something to do with his new friend Chase. They seemed to spend all their time together. Obviously, he had taken her place in some regards as his confidant. That's good, that's normal, she reminded herself, not completely sure what normal was supposed to be. From outside appearances, the Davidson family seemed to have everything cemented together. But it hadn't come without a lot of work. Sure, they had money now, but it certainly hadn't always been that way. Stacy had worked diligently her entire life to create the perfect family. She was desperate to be the casual envy of her neighbors and to keep rumors swiftly swept clear. There had been too much whispering to deal with in the beginning. But now was a different time, and all of that was behind them, she reminded herself. Stacy now held a quiet pride in her family and her life. She had two beautiful children, two beautiful homes, and there was never a worry of want. 
all due to her husband, Nathan. Nathan, the handsome giant who she was well aware was the cause of stirring hearts and fluttering eyelashes at the cocktail parties they regularly attended in the city. Nathan, the successful architect and loving father to her children. Nathan, who she had known since junior high and who had been her high school sweetheart. Nathan, who even after all these years she still desperately loved. Not that they had the perfect marriage, whatever that was supposed to resemble. When she took a moment to analyze her life, the creeping suspicion would enter her mind that she was actually lonely, which is exactly why she constantly sought to minimize those moments. Part of the problem, she realized, was that whoever she was, she had lost herself somewhere a very long time ago. Stacy had her interests, of course, but then again, they generally were focused on the service of others, namely her family. She enjoyed cooking, she enjoyed taking Bertie to her various extracurricular activities, she was always busy with the continual updating of the family photo albums, and scrapbooking their memories had developed into a frequent hobby. But once Bertie grew up and left, what exactly would she do? She couldn't even really recall what she enjoyed doing before the kids had come along. She'd been so young then. She remembered that she'd liked playing basketball. It occurred to her how utterly absurd the thought was. Basketball. At her age, where exactly would she find a group of women in their 40s to play basketball with? She laughed in spite of herself at the ridiculous thought. Besides, she hadn't even been on a court in decades. Stacy caught herself still standing behind Bertie and staring at the wood grain on the tabletop as her thoughts rambled. She bent over and kissed the top of Bertie's head. Please, don't curl up too quickly. She thought the silent prayer to herself. Just then, her husband walked into the dining room. Hmm, something smells good. Apple cinnamon muffins, my favorite. Nathan grabbed the newspaper off the counter and settled into his chair at the head of the table. Bertie, why are your Barbie people naked? They were swimming and Skipper almost drowned, Bertie repeated for her father's benefit. What's on your agenda, Nathan? Stacy asked, trying to get his attention despite the newspaper. Once the boys arrive, I thought maybe we'd go out for 18 holes. You? Nathan responded without lowering his headlines. Bertie has her swimming lesson this afternoon, so we'll be going down to the beach after lunch. I saw Jeffrey's penis. Bertie interrupted her parents nonchalantly. Nathan slowly dropped his paper to the table. Who is Jeffrey, and why have you seen his... <clears throat> um... Penis? Nathan asked, his eyes on Stacy, the question seemingly directed at her instead of Bertie. He shows it to me under the water at swimming lessons, she explained as Nathan and Stacy spoke a silent language with their eyes, trying to decide who would be responsible for dealing with their daughter's impromptu anatomy lesson. Both seemed to let out a collective sigh of relief as Tyler and Chase burst through the door. Tyler, you're early. Bertie, look, your brother's home, Stacy exclaimed, running to give Tyler a hug. I can see him, Bertie responded casually with a wave at her brother from the table. You must be Chase. We've heard so much about you. Sounds like you two had a lot of fun this year, Stacy said as she wrapped Chase in a hug he wasn't quite expecting. Come in, come in. This is Tyler's sister, Bertie. Bertie assessed Chase from head to toe before informing him. I've got a swimming test today, so if you need saving while you're here, I could probably do it. Cool, I'll keep that in mind, Chase laughed at her precociousness. And this is Mr. Davidson, Stacy guided Chase over to a seat near the end of the table. Nathan, he corrected, extending his hand to shake. Of course, we're all adults here. I'm Stacy. She watched as the two men shook hands. There really was no other way to describe Chase. He was a young man, which only further punctuated her earlier thoughts. Her son had brought a young man home, and he was now a man himself. She had to swallow hard to keep too much emotion from bubbling up. It was joy, most definitely, but tinged with mourning for days gone by. She looked from her husband's face to her son's, and the resemblance was even more astonishing than the last time she'd seen them together. They had the same broad smile, humor-filled eyes, and curly hair, two of a kind. So, where are we bunking, Mom? Tyler asked, already popping pieces of a muffin into his mouth. You two are out in the guest cottage, Stacy answered. 
We thought you'd probably want a little privacy. I hate to run when you've just arrived, but Bertie needs to get to her swimming lesson. You boys can entertain yourselves for the afternoon. Eighteen holes, remember? Nathan responded with a nod to Tyler and Chase. We'll stay out of trouble. I'm so glad you're home, Stacy said to Tyler as she pulled out her daughter's chair. Come on, Bertie, let's shake a leg. When we get there, I'd like you to point out Jeffrey's mother for me. The children shrieked as they splashed in the cool lake. Stacy looked up from under her large hat and Jackie O sunglasses. She spotted Bertie in her bright pink bathing suit running away from a little boy. It appeared as if the class was playing tag. Doesn't look like swimming lessons to me, she muttered to herself as she arranged her scrapbooking materials on the picnic table. A menagerie of paper-weighted family photos, stickers, paper frames, glue stick, and scissors littered the workspace in front of her. As she picked up the scissors and went to work, her mind began its favorite game of a free association stream of consciousness. Just cut and glue. Good thing the craft house had the non-toxic glue this time. Photos can be ruined otherwise. To think, I had to inform them. They're supposed to be the experts on these things. What is wrong with parents these days? Ten years old and Bertie has already seen a penis. It's uncalled for. Disgusting. What kind of a mother lets her children run around showing their privates? I hope Bertie didn't touch it. Where was the swimming teacher? I'll have to talk with him, too. Stacy picked up a photo from the previous Christmas of herself and Nathan. She examined her own joyful face, beaming back, and then grimaced as she looked at Nathan beside her, looking less than thrilled. With a few quick snips, she cut out her own image and discarded the rest. Flipping through the holiday pile, she smiled as she found a photo of Nathan laughing. She traced the scissors around her husband and then glued both onto a snowy background with the words, Happy Holidays, glittering above their heads. There's a reason why people say, make memories. They don't just happen, you have to construct them. She thought, satisfied with her work as she looked out toward the water. Bertie's swimming class was gathered in a circle around their swimming coach, listening attentively. She scanned the little bodies for a bright pink bathing suit, but found none. Searching the lake, she finally located Bertie standing a little ways off from her class with a boy her age. Stacy watched in horror as the boy pulled out the front of his shorts and their eyes went down. Her daughter's attention was intently fixated on the boy's bathing suit region, or where his bathing suit should have been. Jeffrey. Stacy stood, pulling off her sunglasses and running down to the water. Bertie! Bertie! Get away from that boy! Without waiting for her daughter to react, Stacy ran right into the lake, hiking her dress up around her hips. Bertie! What are you doing? You two, come with me! Seeing no other option, Stacy let her dress fall into the water and grabbed a hand of each child, pulling them out of the lake. Mom, you're embarrassing me, Bertie whined, feeling the eyes of her swimming class and the beach crowd drawing toward them. I'm embarrassing you? I wasn't the one cavorting out in the middle of the lake in front of the whole beach. She turned to the boy who couldn't have been more than ten. I suppose you're Jeffrey? I didn't do anything, he pleaded through his toothless kisser. I saw exactly what you did, you little pervert, Stacy growled back. Excuse me, is there a problem here? Stacy was too intent on not letting the little exhibitionist escape to take much notice of the bikini-clad woman who had approached them. Yes, but I'll handle the situation. Well, I'd love to be part of handling the situation. This is my son, the woman informed Stacy, hands resting on her bare hips. Stacy let her eyes take in the sight before her, a woman of about her age in a bright lime green bikini with jewelry dangling from her belly button. Her complete appraisal of the woman took less than two seconds. Well, that makes sense. This little nudist son of yours has been showing my daughter his penis. The woman bit her lip to try and suppress a growing smile. You think this is funny? It's a violation of her childhood, Stacy reeled, her anger at the injustice getting the better of her. I wasn't showing my penis, Jeffrey interrupted. I wanted to show her a minnow. Minnow, I'm sure. Stacy shook her head incredulously. Mom, he's telling the truth. He was just showing me a minnow he caught, Bertie testified on Jeffrey's behalf. This is unbelievable. I don't care what we all want to call it. Children of ten should not be sharing that kind of thing. The bikini woman reached out and tussled her son's hair, as if to forgive the whole incident. Let's just relax. They're kids. At this rate, not for long, Stacy shot back, unconvinced. 
Something cold and wet found its way into Stacy's hand. She looked down and flinched at the sight of a motionless, slimy little fish that Jeffrey had pressed into her palm. See, I told you, I caught a minnow, Jeffrey squealed, laughing uncontrollably at the reaction he'd gotten from Stacy and splashing around in the water. His mother just watched, amused. Bertie, grab your things. We're leaving. Stacy took Bertie by the arm again and marched her over to the picnic table. She began stuffing her scrapbooking supplies into a shoulder bag. I think you've had enough swimming lessons. This afternoon, we'll go to the community center and see what other activities they're offering. But mom, I liked swimming. Stacy planted her sunglasses on her face and led her daughter off the beach, careful to avoid the curious eyes she was sure were following her. We can't always get what we'd like. We have to enjoy what we're given. And that's a wrap on this chapter of Mulligans. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and that it got you thinking about the complex relationships we all navigate. The ones that challenge us, change us, and ultimately shape who we become. If this chapter spoke to you, or if you're reflecting on the big questions of love, family, or second chances, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below or hit me up on social. Whether you're pondering Tyler's journey, Chase's emerging sexuality, Nathan's dilemma, or Stacy's challenges, or just want to share your own thoughts, I'm here for it all. Don't forget, if you're craving more, you can grab your very own copy of Mulligans. The paperback, ebook, and audiobook are available with links in the show notes. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you won't miss the next chapter. Trust me, things are about to get even more interesting, and I can't wait to share it with you. Until next time, remember, second chances are just around the corner, and love can always find a way, no matter how messy it gets. Keep dreaming big and loving boldly. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next chapter of Mulligans. Take me somewhere to warm a weather to something better than here I right am. Cause the days get longer, the nights grow colder, and lonely shoulder when you're not a Tell me, do you want me right now? I don't wanna wait to find out I need you to let me light out tonight Will you let me till the sun goes down? Will you let me till the stars burn out? And tell me, do you see a future filled with me? Cause I do I see you I see you 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 Fourteen hours and fourteen days Yeah, it feels the same When I'm not with Tell me, do you want me right now?